All right, guys, so we're going to do a quick review today of the new 2019 Kenwood units. In particular, today we are going to be talking about the new DDX 919WS, a widescreen unit that is built for the Toyotas and the Subarus out there that are 200 millimeters wide with the rounded edges. Now, we are going to do a separate review on the standard double DIN, which is this size. Uh, this is the DDX 9019. DABS, which actually has DABS radio in it, but that's a standard 180 mil wide or millimeters wide double din unit. Now we're going to do that in a separate video, but today specifically we're going to be talking about these, which are the Toyota widescreens, because they are very popular. They fit every single Toyota pretty much from 2003 right up to current, including new vehicles like the Toyota Hilux and all the new models. Um, so it's a very, very popular unit. Now we're going to compare this for you to last year's model which is the 918 okay so we still have these ones currently available they are on sale at the moment but they'll run out probably in the next week or so but we're going to give you a direct comparison between the two so you can see what changed from 2018 through to 2019 all right so the ddx 919 ws so basically it's a ddx 9 series the 19 stands for 2019 because it's a 2019 model and WS widescreen. Now, these in particular have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Wi-Fi built in for wireless smartphone mirroring, okay? So the wireless smartphone mirroring, whilst previously, a couple of years ago, did work for Apple, only works for Android now, which is gonna be a two-way mirroring when you mirror onto the phone. Um, now, new addition this year is actually the wireless Apple CarPlay. So there's actually gonna be wireless in Australia now, or, or Australasia. And you're gonna, there is a slight difference though in the wiring of the looms in order to make that wire wireless. So you can actually still use it through the USB and get your CarPlay, but to use the wireless Apple CarPlay, there is a new VSS wire, which we are gonna show you and explain that just shortly, but it's very, very important because that must be connected in order to work. Android Auto will still work like normal. It's still gonna be wired at this stage. It is not gonna be wireless because Google haven't released it on all the phones in Australia. Therefore, they haven't allowed compatibility for it just at this point in time. Kenwood haven't made it clear whether they'll be doing an update to allow that to the units in Australia when that actually gets released. Um, but we'll have more on that as it actually comes through. But these have only just come out last week. So we're gonna unbox this for you guys, but it actually has high res audio. It is a flip down CD DVD screen. It is high definition capacitive touch, so we are gonna make you aware of that. It is a new addition that was made last year, but it will continue this year as well. This is what you are gonna get in the box. You are gonna get a standard remote control, which you can use, a GPS receiver, which is pretty straightforward. You can see any of our previous reviews on the older models if you'd like. Two USBs, one's gonna be for Apple CarPlay, one's for Android Auto, be aware, that black is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, whereas gray will only be Android Auto. And there'll actually be two different ports in the back of the Kenwood units, which we will show you a little bit shortly once we get the unit out as well. Also included is an external microphone for extra clear talking on it. It is a stereo microphone. It can have the sensitivity adjusted on the screen so that you can actually get a high quality call. So on a lot of the Toyotas, uh, they had built-in mics that weren't real clear. So that is gonna fix that issue for you guys out there, That anyone that had that issue. Um, included is also an instruction manual some screws, some uh, batteries for your remote control, and this. This is just a standard steering wheel control adapter, which you actually get, it's a 28 pin plug, and that will do steering wheel controls for a lot of the Toyotas, pretty much from 2013, 2014 onwards, that will do. It has built-in steering wheel controls on the Kenwood unit, which you can program. So if you wanna look on our YouTube channel, Carbon Car Systems, you'll see how that's done. We do videos and showing you how to make um, custom harnesses for the older models as well. Um, if you do buy, we do kits on our website. We do a lot of these custom harnesses, like this will suit some vehicles, but not all. Uh, we make custom harnesses for all you guys out there. So this is probably the most important update in terms of what's changed in the wiring on the Kenwood DDX 919 WS widescreen, okay? So this is a Toyota and Subaru specific unit. Now you can see this harness here that comes with it. It actually comes with the generic Toyota power plugs and speaker plugs, and then a couple of extra wires. And I'll quickly show you what they are. And we have talked about them before, but we're gonna show you what's different. So you do have this long length one here, which is the light green, is for your handbrake parking switch. Now, 
That you can actually just put to ground, or the black wire, and that will earth it out so you can actually watch or use the DVD player and functions while you're driving, or your passengers can use it, um, is the technical term you want to be saying, but it'll allow you to use it at all times. Now, the second one here that you have a long wire for is the reverse camera trigger. Now, that is just to tell the screen to flick over to run your reverse camera. It varies per car where that will go. Basically goes to your reverse light trigger. That is a standard setup for a reverse camera. We actually do a pre-wiring for all our kits where if your car has a camera, we will pre-wire it so you have a pre-wired loom like this. I'll explain that in a bit more in a second. But here's the new addition this year. This is the VSS wire and this is the new pink wire just untangling here for you guys. That is a VSS wire, okay? So this is vehicle speed sense and it's just uh, five pins in right next to the blue antenna wire. And it is very important that you hook that up to the vehicle speed sense wire. It's because Apple CarPlay needs to know on the wireless system for some reason, probably for accuracy, how fast your car is going to give you accurate, accurate representation on their navigation. Now, I don't know why they've done that. Um, it seems a little bit painful because it's a very hard wire to find on certain vehicles, uh, but it is very important that you actually hook that up. Okay. All right, so that's it. There is a caution there. Please don't cut a cable on the way. So it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think that's for if you're running the cable, make sure it doesn't actually get split or cut because if that does get split or cut when you run that, um, it often goes to your ECU or your electronic control unit or engine control unit, sorry, on the car, probably good damage the car. So I think they're just trying to cover themselves in that regard. Please excuse the noise we're packing in the background. Now, that's not gonna be a problem for a lot of you guys out there if you're buying kits from us because what we do is we pre-wire these. Uh, we call these our Auto Chimp uh, DIY kits and we do all the wiring for you. So like, for example, this would be a new Hilux kit. I'm gonna show you how it fits in a minute uh, into the new stereo. But if you get the fascia, the stereo, we provide the loom so you don't have to do any of the wiring. We've got a DIY videos on our YouTube channel to show you how to plug that in. And that will do steering wheel controls, reverse trigger, um, vehicle speed sense wire, powers, reverse camera retention, and antenna adapter. And we pre-wire it for you so it's all plug and play. Um, so for you guys out there that buy from us, um, that VSS wire is not going to be a problem, but for everyone out there that's doing a uh, universal Toyota, you will have to find that wire. It will vary per car, so just be careful on that one. Um, you're probably seeking professional for that one. Probably go to a store for that if you don't know. Uh, for anything that we do and we pre-wire it or we can't pre-wire it, we're going to organize a database to actually show people when they buy the kits from us um, where that wire would have to go and how to wire it. Um, so if we're going to sell it, we're going to make you aware of that just to make your life easier. We're not gonna give out the information freely, unfortunately, because uh, you know it's probably a thing where you need to take to a professional um, if you don't know what you're doing. But for our kits where it's DIY, it's a little bit different because we pre-wire a lot of the stuff and we design it for our kits. All right, so guys, here is the back of the unit and uh, let's have a look at this. We'll pull out one of the old models at the same time. It's the 918, which is the old model, this one here. And we're gonna see what's different on the hardware side of things. Because this is our, uh, this is my first look at this actually. I think it's uh, the first one I've actually pulled out of a box. I saw a pre-production model, um, or pre-release model. It's gonna be our first one that we've actually used and seen uh, in our office here. All right, let's check this bad boy out. See if there's a lot of differences. So, they really come neatly packaged. Um, Ken was pretty well clear. Uh, pretty good on the packaging side of things, which is great. So, let's put these up a little bit higher for you guys to see. All right, we're going to show you this on the left-hand side here. I'm going to show you these two models. Now, we're actually going to come down a little bit lower. Hopefully, we can compare the two directly. So, on the left, this is going to be the 919 for anyone that wasn't watching when we just did that. And uh, Sorry, 918. 919 is on the right-hand side. Uh, so, look. A direct comparison right here, it uh, pretty well looks the same. Um, there's not really going to be anything different hardware-wise, uh, but I'll quickly run through it for you guys. I'm going to say it's pretty well exactly the same. So, you see any difference there, man? I think I see any difference. Yeah. But uh, look, we're going to wire that up in a car in a minute. We're going to see if there's any feature changes and stuff. Um, so here you got your dual USB. So like I mentioned earlier, black's going to be for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Uh, Gray is going to be for Android Auto only. Um, 
So when you run those, if you have a factory USB, you want to be using the black one because it'll allow you to use both phones. Um, the gray one, only Android. So if you have a factory USB adapter, like in some of our kits, make sure it goes on to the black port. A couple other things here. They have an external, like an RG port, RGB import port for any aftermarket navigation units out there. That's not really used on a lot of these nav units these days because it has um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Kenwood actually don't make anything to go into that. But guys out there that want hammer full drive maps, if you watch one of our other videos on our YouTube at Carbon Car Systems, uh, you'll see there's a hammer full drive map add-on that you can actually plug through that. So be aware of that, you can actually do that. Um, I think it runs through this port. I can't remember really, we'll watch our video. Um, so some noticeable difference here. There is a, not differences the same, dash camera inputs. Kenwood does a DRVN 520 dash camera which integrates to these units so you can actually get uh, driver or DVR recordings or driver recordings while you're driving. Next along you have the GPS antenna receiver. Up here you have the microphone. Remote in which does your steering wheel controls for anyone that wants to use the built-in steering wheel controls. Up here behind this screw you can actually see it here you can zoom in on the video if you need to but this is a HDMI port right on the inside in here, okay? So you can actually run a HDMI in under this screw and put it in. Something I was aware of when we were doing the older models, you can't use a real thick uh, plastic HDMI cable. It's gonna be thin in order to fit in there. So just be aware of that, guys. Um, there is a couple of camera leads here. So these are just for reverse camera inputs. And there is a video out for any overhead screens or any other video you wanna run in the car, like rear, rear screens on headrests. Um, and a dash camera input, okay? Now, also, these inputs can be changed in the settings, and we'll show you that a little bit further in on the video, but you can change dash camera to be front camera input. So, for example, so you can even change the video out to be a video in. So you can run three video inputs on this unit, changed electronically uh, on the software. So, antenna adapter, that's for your AM, FM radio. This unit does not have DAB plus radio, which is a digital radio stations that are additional, um, that work around capital cities and things like that, where there's the infrastructure for that signal. Doesn't really work when you go country or out uh, further out from the city. So a couple other things on the back here, you do have um, on the right hand side here, what is this remote out? Okay, we're not gonna actually use that on anything in Australia. You have your main power port and then you have um, all your RCA outputs. So these are high voltage outputs, four, four volts, I think, from memory. Um, might have to check the specs on those to see. They are gold plated for high quality because this does use high res audio um, for those really high flak files and things like that for your audio files out there. It does have a real big uh, EQ on it. So 13 band or something, electronic EQ, and it has a uh, time alignment as well. So it's kind of, kind of a cool unit for high res audio. Um, you've also got an AV output. Again, that's for running any external sources. Can be used for an AV input, I believe, as well if you want to run things like external game devices like uh, Playstations and things like that. Um, so there you go, guys. Look, that is the main unit itself um, compared to the old one. I'll show you the graphical user interfaces based on um, my car as well, but electronically or hardware-wise, they're actually exactly the same. Now, I'll show you what we mean here about some of the differences in the size okay and i'll give you a direct representation and that's why i've got this hilux unit out so these are the widescreen unit now they're a very flush full screen with no buttons on it so you can zoom in and have a look on that you can see that well without glare on there so you can actually see that there's no buttons it'll have electronic buttons light up on the side here very very clean unit so when you get some of these toyotas with this widescreen gap it fits perfectly like that, okay? So that's the 200 millimeter wide chrome bezel with the rounded edges and it is designed for a lot of the Toyotas and a lot of the Subarus that are the new vehicles. So that's the difference there. If you had like a standard doubled in, and I'll quickly open this to show you guys the size different. This is a direct comparison because it's always a little bit easier to understand. Uh, we'll this doubled in, let's open this bad boy up. Ripping this bag apart. All right, we'll repack that nice and neat. All right, so this is a standard doubled in as a, as a size comparison. I'll pull it out and I'll give you a side by side, or we'll do top down. Bring that camera over. All right, that's a size comparison for you guys out there. So 
180 mils wide compared to the Toyota 200 millimeter wide one, okay? So if you were to put that in this Toyota fascia, give you an example for you guys out there, that's how it's gonna sit. All right, so you can actually see that's how much wider it would be and that gives you good reference points. So these are about 180 millimeters wide, so about 10 mils either side. If you were gonna run one of these standard double dins in one of these units, you can run them still. You can run some little wings like this on the side of the unit to actually fill those gaps. And the only reason you really wanna do that, because I, I really like these Toyota widescreen units, um, is if you were wanting DAB plus radio, because this widescreen unit is only built for the Asian market. It wasn't really designed for specifically Australia, but you could run wings on the side like that. And that gives you the 10 mil either side to fill those Toyota gaps if you wanted that DAV unit. But look guys, those two units, between these two, the only difference between the software on these two is this one has DAV plus radio. This one does not have DAV plus radio, but it does have gesture control, which is a software feature. I will show you differently. They both have fold down screens, okay? They are CD, DVD. This one has buttons on the bottom. This one does not, it's just complete touch panel and they're both capacitive HD touch screens. Now, so that gives you a direct reference between those two units. Um, now, if you don't have DAB on this, don't fret though, you can download apps. So there's an app called TuneIn Radio. You can still run DAB stations on here, but it will stream some data. So just be aware of that guys. But that's the hardware side, front and back, unboxing. Let's show you in a car, and we're gonna show you some of the wiring as well to give you the rundown. Guys, here we go. We're just gonna quickly change out this unit in our sample vehicle here at Carbon. Uh, this is a older unit in this car, actually. I think this is a 917. Uh, this is about the third generation of these units, I believe, at this stage of fourth generation. I think they're 916, 917, 918, 919. So being the fourth generation of unit, it is actually quite well tested. So, I mean, these guys are uh, pretty well rock solid with, I think out of all the units, we sell about probably oh, 50 plus of these a month. Um, I think I've only ever had two possibly come back, I think at the end of the day. Um, so they've been a really reliable unit for us. And I think um, most people out there would agree. But look guys, I'm gonna quickly change this out. Like all right so guys forgive this mess because this is really our test vehicle we don't we haven't tidied all this up but normally when we do a loom it's uh nice and neat and taped up and loomed up beautifully for you guys out there uh, when we pre-make them but look this is a toyota 86 which is the same as a brz and i'm quickly going to show you uh, behind a lot of the stereos is the vss but it does vary per car like i said but we are going to show you on most vehicles um if you get a radio from us, we will provide this information for you, basically, okay? We're not going to openly give it out to just everybody, unfortunately, because um, uh, people don't want us to do that. Other stores get really annoyed at us giving you the information out there so you can do it yourself because, obviously, it undercuts their work a little bit. Um, but, honestly, I think, you know, for you guys out there that want to try it yourself, it's, it's not something um, you probably would have paid for anyway. You probably would have done your own research. So, look, I don't really think it matters, but, hey... Um, I'm gonna show you what you would test for. So vehicle speed is basically when you're moving, it's gonna send a pulse to the unit at different rates to show you how fast the car's going. And basically sending a pulse will increase as your car's speed increases. So if you had a vehicle, so I know where it is on this car, um, and I know this is the actual vehicle speed sense wire on this car. For example, I'm gonna reverse here while I'm sitting here testing, and you'll see this light flash, right? So that's just flashing slowly because I'm moving slowly. When I stop, it stops, right? That is technically the uh, vehicle speed sense wire. Slow at this stage, because as, as I roll the wheels, we're only rolling slowly. But that's a way you can actually check for VSS for you guys out there. Um, if you don't know, don't be probing all the wires if you're not 100% sure, because um, if you have a loaded test light or things like that, suggest using a multimeter or use an LED test light because they don't use a lot of uh, current. They won't load up the circuit. So if you're really not sure, don't get involved in it. See your local store and I'm sure they'll help you out. Now, I've just made a quick little patch lead here. I'm going to upgrade my system to uh, this, this new model today. And I've just done a little patch lead for the wire that is actually missing from the Kenwood unit. And I'm just going to squeeze it in here. Give me a second. I'll get a tool and poke it in. 
um, and this is just going to upgrade my kit. But if you were to buy this from us, we'll have this all pre-wired for you guys, and you won't have to do anything. All right, so I've just pinned that in there to make the old harness look like one of the new ones. For all you guys out there that want to upgrade your old unit to a new one, it will come with a new lead, but if you wanted to know, it's five, five pins in from the left-hand side from that little tab, and it's normally a pink wire, okay? So, and I've made a, a special patch lead from my car because I know exactly where it is on this vehicle, and I'm gonna pin it into the vehicle speed sense wire back here. Um, or actually, I don't have the plug here, so I might just tap it on. I don't have the other end of the plug, guys. So, so look, um, it might take some specialized uh, skills out there <laughs> for you guys that have never done it before. I'm just gonna tap this on here because this video is purposely for the review. This is not an installation video, so it's not common practice. Um, if you're gonna do all this stuff, tape it up nice and neat. This is, like I said, just our demo vehicle for doing videos and showing things out there for YouTube. Uh, look, I'm gonna tape that up. I'm gonna put the brackets on the unit, whack it in, and then I'm gonna show you how the wireless Android or wireless Apple CarPlay works, and we're also gonna show you some of the new features on the new unit. So just to show you brackets as well, because it is quite important on these 918s, um, they're really designed for Toyota. So this is a factory Toyota bracket here, and it actually just suits right into the factory location. So if you look there, two holes, two holes, lines up perfectly for all the factory locations, and they give you all the screws. So just be aware of that guys, the mounting brackets will generally fit with all the pre-drilled holes for Toyota or Subaru because they're well designed by Kenwood. All right guys, so we're gonna show you the boot up screen on this, it's pretty quick. Um, one of the cool things about Kenwood is you can actually still use your reverse camera while it's loading. So immediately when you get in your car, even though your stereo is booting, you will also be able to use that reverse camera and drive out immediately. Um, so this is the initial setup screen for you guys. You can set multiple languages on here. There is quite a few different languages on here. Um, you know, I probably can't tell you all of them, but there's a quick glance at them um, to give you an idea of what is available. If you want to check that out, check it out on the Kenwood website. They will show you exactly what languages they've got. Um, the clock on this will set with GPS. So you don't actually have to set up yourself. You can make it 24 or 12 hour time. GMT plus 10 because we're here in Sydney, Australia, but that has been set by the GPS signal itself. One of the cool things about these, and you will have to do from the start, is set up reverse camera interruption. So if you have a reverse camera, it is off in its initial setting. You will have to turn that on. You do have the option of parking guidelines on or off, and you can actually adjust some of these guidelines yourself as well. You can actually change them, spread them out wider depending on what you need for your vehicle, okay? So that is customizable to suit your needs. Um, there is some camera assignment settings in here, like I said before, where we're talking about the back of the units. Um, you can actually assign where this camera is. So this is a new addition for this year. You could previously change it between front and rear, um, so you could actually go, well, the AV input, now I want that to be a front camera input so that you could run a front camera instead, okay, instead of AV in if you're never gonna use that. But a nice addition by Kenwood on the software is you could make this a left and right camera as well because on the market now, you do have parking cameras and things like that where you can actually mount them on your mirrors and see the side of your vehicle. So that's one of the cool things about this because it has three camera inputs, you can actually run three separate cameras which will be two sides and a rear or front, rear, two sides or one side. I'm not sure exactly how you run the two or all four together, but hey, moving forward, you can actually set, get some individual camera modules that will do that and run through one input on the Kenwood unit. So uh, look, it's a lot of versatility there. It does have the dash camera that you could run through this as well. Instead of a dash camera, you could make that another camera. Again, really, really versatile. One of the main things you wanna do on this setup is actually turn off the demo mode because that's just a showroom display where when it goes into the demo board, it'll just flick through some advertising to show you the features of the unit. So you don't wanna use that. Um, and you can actually set this up for three-way crossover settings um, on this. So you have to set your speaker mode and set them correctly because you can run uh, different frequencies directly off this unit much like you would uh, an amplifier processor, okay? So um, that gets a little bit more complex on the audio side, so we'll leave that to another day. We're just gonna be talking about the unit today. This warning, again, you can touch this to automatically turn this warning off. It just reminds you for safe driving, and after 10 seconds, that will grow away itself, or you can just push agree. You cannot turn that off completely because people do ask about that. 
but you cannot, okay? Um, look, here you go. This is the new interface. So this is a HD screen and it is capacitive touch, meaning it uses the current in your finger to do all the swiping and movement. And as you can see here, it is super, super fast, very clean. And some of the new additions this year is this picture frame here in the background. You can actually touch that, load different picture frames into that. So I haven't actually played with it myself. There you go. So it's just actually asking you to transition through some of the factory um, pictures that we've loaded in here. How many slideshows do you want to have on there? You can actually set multiple. Obviously, it just started from five then, and you can sort how they scroll through. So I guess that's like if you wanted to load up a collection of your favorite HD pictures, you can make your unit look uh, nice and pretty, which is uh, very, very cool. So also along the bottom here, which I might try out, I think you can adjust some of these things here. Oh, let's have a look here. Open it up. Okay. All right. This is one of the cool things you could do last year. You can actually press and hold the icons, much like your smartphone, and change things up. So if you wanted this in a different position, you could change them up. Let's see if we can change the auto. Oh, yep. You can change them. Didn't think you'd be able to change them, but we might try that again. Sorry. Hang on. There you go. So you can actually change up a lot of the icons. Whilst it's not as fast as your smart screen, uh, smartphone on that aspect, um, the rest of the unit functions very, very fast. Um, last year, it didn't have both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay up here at the same time. So, you know, I'd really like to test. I don't know why they'd be both there at the same time because previously you could only run one at a time. Whether you can run them dual at the moment, I don't know. So we can probably try that on both our USBs and we'll give you a heads up on that on our Facebook page at Carbon Car Systems and we'll go from there. Um, on some of the top of the range units up here, I did know you could actually change some of these widgets as well. So on this, this is a new home screen and I believe you can change these up as well. So if you wanted your GPS or your um, directional guidance up here instead of the clock, you could change that. And I think you can set all sorts of different ones into these sections okay guys so you can actually set them to be what you want them to be and i think there's a couple of settings in the back end that will allow you to do that um so a couple of differences wireless mirroring that is actually there again they've actually removed the apple tab there so you can't actually do apple that is something that kenwood aren't allowed to release i think that's apple restrictions in an essence that you cannot run wireless mirroring for apple they want to keep it for their um, carplay or airplay sorry and just uh, run mirroring through that for selected devices or approved devices so they're not actually going to be running that um, as always this is a flip down cd dvd so you can actually push eject on this and you can actually change um, or put the cds in behind okay so that's one of the cool things there you can actually adjust the screen on this as well so that was one of those first screens you saw you can actually have different angles so if you do get any glare you can actually change that now viewing angle right here that was previously in a different setting in the back end so that's actually a new addition to this unit it used to be in the back end into display settings but you can actually change the way the angle displays on the screen so if you're looking down at it or up at it depending on the vehicle you could change that to be a better picture for yourself so um, you know that's a nice touch on these units on these um, this is the 919 WS which the lower models don't have those settings okay um, what else we got here? So this is your standard AM, FM radio type setup. Um, that's pretty traditional. There's nothing new there. Um, Ken would have a nice feature of going into the Bluetooth. If you have two Bluetooth settings, you can actually run. Um, this is cool. I never did that before. That's automatically looking for the Bluetooth straight up. Um, so that makes it easy for you guys out there to pair your Bluetooth rather than fumbling around in the back end settings to set that up. But up here, this is where you would have two different phones. So you can actually have um, your work phone and your office phone running at one time wirelessly through Bluetooth, whichever rings will both operate on the unit. And that's for phone calls and audio as well. So settings of devices, you can pair up to five different devices to the unit. Um, pretty simple and pretty intuitive of Kenwood there to be able to set things up. Uh, a couple of different things, the device address and pin code. So that's very, very straightforward as well. Um, let's have a look what else we've got here. Built-in Spotify, but when you use Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, that will actually work as well. You don't need to worry about Spotify directly on the unit, but I guess if you were running a straight USB without Apple CarPlay, um, you could do it there as well. I kind of see that as pointless because Android and Apple both have that. Um, 
You can run iPod, audio settings. Some of the audio settings are really, really good on these units. Um, we've talked about these previously. Not much has changed there. So here is your EQ. I think it's a 13 band EQ. I can't remember, it's straight off the top of my head, but you can count that in the video. Very, very versatile. It does have your standard type faders, front to rear. It also has a time alignment. So here you go, positional settings. So you can actually throw the sound or adjust it based on priority of who's in the car. Um, zone control, so you can actually set up dual zone if you have a rear audio source, um, such as an overhead DVD player, so you can run something separate on the rear and to the front. Some graphical, dis uh, sorry, digital changes to the sound effects is also available, and audio memory. So I'm not really sure what the audio memory is. I think uh, you could set up um, different settings uh, for different people that want to use the car and you can actually save that and then go to that memory at a different stage if you're a different driver so i guess that would be more of your driver settings um, for different audio depending on what you like um, like i said they still do have this nav button also on the back end but that nav is not actually built in in nav through apple carplay android auto okay guys that nav button is for aftermarket additions or third party additions of navigation through that RGB port or the HDMI port out the back. Um, like I said, Hammer Maps, uh, we do have some available on our website that you can actually use those as well. Um, all right, let's go into the Apple CarPlay Android Auto. We do have to change phone so I can show you the wireless Apple CarPlay for filming because we are filming on an Apple phone, but let's do that right now and we'll show you how that works. All right, guys, so this is my first play of this unit, so we're going to go through this with you and uh, I'm going to learn as we do this exactly at the same time you do, so it's going to be a real fresh video, so we're going to go into settings and AV settings here, Apple CarPlay devices, because I'm just presuming we've got to set up this Wi-Fi before we can actually use it. Um, Alright, so here we go. Now, I think this is because Apple actually do the first handshake through Bluetooth and then they connect via Wi-Fi, okay? So we're going to pair up our Bluetooth first and then it communicates how we can actually use um, the Apple CarPlay because Apple CarPlay works through Wi-Fi. Oh, so here you go. So it, ooh, we, uh, it just went back, so there we go. Um, that was the gesture control interfering then, but we can actually pair this Bluetooth up. So we're just going to push pair, hands-free, audio, phone book. Yeah, we're going to allow all that. No problems. Yeah, we want to add this, and it's going to do the handshake for the Apple CarPlay. Yep, use CarPlay with 916. Yes, we do want to use the CarPlay. And there we go. Okay, it's added my uh, name on there. Oh, there you go, straight up. Look, straight. That's beautiful. It is completely wireless using uh, Apple CarPlay. Um, and that is clean as uh, anything. And that is super quick, actually. Um, there's no lag there. And this is a really good addition because the Apple CarPlay using the USB used to have current drop issues when you use long cables or non-genuine cables. So to be able to do it wisely, um, I'm finding this is a really cool feature. Um, check that out. That's simple and easy. So that will just pair up every single time. If we go to the home screen, let's have a look here. Uh, yep, perfect. It's running there. Straight back into it. Very, very fast. Um, look, it's even bringing up some of the Chinese maps that we used overseas. Um, I can't remember, I think they're by Tencent. I actually make those overseas, their integrated maps for the Chinese. Um, Google Maps, Waze Navigation, like I said, Spotify, My Tuning Radio. So this is if you didn't have the DAB stuff that I mentioned earlier. Uh, My Tuning Radio does all those web radio apps, such as um, all the radio stations you wouldn't normally get. But it's basically like web streaming of audio and radio. Um, audio books, podcasts, everything you need to do, and the traditional Apple Maps as well. So very very easy that is how you connect the wireless apple carplay android auto one question i will like to test and i'll have to get another android phone to test it i don't have one on me uh, we need a third one to do it but test if android auto would work at the same time as apple carplay so that is definitely something we could um, we could test out um i'm pretty certain as we were looking through that let me see if the radio is hooked up on this yes i did hook it up all right here's the radio working here I think that home screen does some nice audio control stuff. Yeah, here we go. So this screen here, that was actually your audio control. And that was an easy, quick touch to do your audio adjustment settings. So you can actually touch that and go straight to your EQ. So that was very nice, very easy to do just then. Um, there was a couple of back-end settings I might quickly show you that I noticed as well. Um, that front page widget, as you went into settings, 
I think it was on a display. I did notice you could change the widget and the wallpapers. Okay, there's the wallpapers. You can actually customize all these button colors as well, guys, um, to choose any color that you want. Uh, AV, oh, yep, TV tuner, Apple control. So that would be an aftermarket. Speech quality adjustment. So here you go. This is adjustments for your microphone, echo cancel, noise reduction, and micro microphone sensitivity level. So you can actually change that if you find people aren't hearing you properly or the echo is too loud if your cabin reverbs a little bit you can actually change that setting that's pretty nice as well user interface this is where i was before um one of the, the things this vehicle has is gesture control or this 919 has it can be a little bit annoying and what that is is if you swipe in front of the screen it does different things right and you can actually set them up so you see i swipe left it does the um, apple carplay there if i swipe up again it would do something different um, yeah, there we go home screen. So you can see that's the gesture control feature of this unit um, You can like that some people do like it But uh, me personally, I find it a little bit annoying because when I go to change the radio My hand sort of darts across like this and it changes things on it So you can actually turn that gesture control off and there's a beep associated with it. Oh That's a new setting gesture control sensitivity So that was never there so you could actually probably turn that up make it a little bit more sensitive because you saw once or twice then it didn't work straight off the bat so if you were using it you could adjust that remember if you do have steering wheel controls in here you would program them up and you can actually map your steering wheel controls to any function you want including voice activation and that is a beautiful thing on the Camelwood units if you did have steering wheel controls this vehicle doesn't have it but we do have other videos on our YouTube channel showing that as well addition widget setup Photo frames on or off, you can actually set that up in here. That was one of the main things I wanted to show you, but you could actually change that as well. You would change them through loading up through the USB. All right, guys. Uh, so this is just initialization settings, some very simple stuff, and back to your camera. Look, that's virtually all the changes that have been made to this new unit. All in all, I think it's very, very clean, much like the old units. The main additions to take away from this is wireless Apple CarPlay, but you must have that vehicle speed sense wire hooked up. I will go back, I'll get back to you on the dual uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And one other question I did have before this even came up was, can you still use Android Auto without hooking up the VSS wire? So look, I'm gonna quickly pull this out test that for you i'm going to disconnect the vss wire and we're going to see if that still works because you guys out there that have the android you might not need to worry about that vss wire and that would be nice to know as well so i'll test that for you guys so if you have an android hey your installation is going to be pretty easy if you buy from us uh, we're going to pre-wire all that shit for you so you don't need to worry about it uh, but guys i hope that's helped you out give us a like and subscribe on our youtube channel carbon car systems it really helps us out and uh, if you have any questions hit us up on youtube or our facebook messenger and we'll get back to you asap all right, guys, so here we go. Just did a bit more testing quickly for you on some of those questions I just brought up. Yes, you can use Android Auto while without the VSS wire connected. So um, if you do have Android Auto and you don't use Apple, you don't need to worry about that VSS wire. It will still work. So there's the Android Auto for anyone out there that is using that. It's got the navigation on the left-hand side here. Um, you can actually tap that, and if you have Waze navigation, it'll bring up all the other options of navigation as well. This phone obviously doesn't have it. It's got your audio. You do have voice guidance, return the Kenwood home. So that will still work. Now, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto will not work at the same time. You actually can only use one or the other. And one of the little things I found a little bit buggy was if you were running the Android Auto, but you had wireless CarPlay in the same car, it would always pull off Android Auto. <laughs> off probably not the greatest words to use but it will actually move from auto android over to apple carplay as a priority and would always default back to apple carplay through the wireless um a little bit buggy but i guess it's going to prioritize that and it doesn't matter if i turned off the wi-fi so essentially you would have to depair the apple carplay so it would prioritize the android auto in an essence okay guys um so just be aware of that that might be a little bug they may fix that in an update i'm not too sure but hey i guess if you're mainly using apple you use an apple if you're in an android you probably use an android very rarely do you have an apple and an android in the same car at the same time or for the same driver at the same time so it's probably not a real big deal for anyone out there um apple carplay with the vss um, we're just going to double check all that and make sure but i'm pretty certain you will definitely need to use uh vss wire 
guys. So this is actually what will happen if you drive without the VSS wire for Apple CarPlay. So it will actually work for a little while. Like this worked for about uh, 5Ks or 3Ks, three kilometers. For those guys out there that don't know what that means and it actually comes up with the speed sensor warning and then it says it won't work while driving whilst it will continue to work at first it will eventually stop working so vss essential for apple carplay android auto on wireless for these camwood units